Hi, I'm JBS Yao, and welcome to another episode of JBS. Have you come across such a scenario before? Hello? Yes, it's just that we are dealing with actually properties. So I'm just checking with you, sir, whether you have uh, any thoughts of this before? Yeah, yeah, I mean selling or yeah, listing your property. Or, hello? Hi, this is Javier. May I speak to Mr. Tan, please? Hi, Mr. Tan. Yes, I'm actually calling regards to your property at uh, Project A. Yes, Mr. Tan. So what is the difference between these two calls? And if you're receiving these calls at your end, how do you feel about these calls? So before we proceed with our topic of the day, the art of telemarketing, let's get back to the basics and learn about the true meaning of telemarketing. Telemarketing is a direct marketing of goods or services via a phone call to a potential client. Main objectives of telemarketing is usually coming from making appointments, lead generation, or doing a market research over the phone. Let's go to the beginning of this video where we started off with two scenarios of two different callers calling to the same client. The first caller faces some difficulties. There were some issues in reaching out to his client. Now let me show you some factors. Point one, lack of confidence. Caller A is not able to reach out to his client. Point two, lack of conviction. He doesn't believe in his product that will sell by itself. Point three, fear of rejection. He sets a barrier in front of him. He's afraid of being rejected and he's not able to reach out to his client eventually. Point four, unclear delivery of message simply means he doesn't communicate well enough to his client. Point five, unclear goals. His objectives may not be set right in the first place. And finally, point six, he is lack of organization for not taking down the right answers to the questions he's asking. So today's agenda will be as follows. We'll be talking more in details on what you should do before you start your telemarketing, what you should do when you're talking during a conversation with your client, and what you should do after you hang up a phone with your client. And finally, I'll round it off with top 10 tips from myself on how you can actually do a successful telemarketing phone call. So before you start, what should you do? Ask yourself, what is your objective of your call? Be it it's a simple phone call to ask for appointment or etc. There must be two objectives, a primary objective that you must meet, if not a secondary objective that you can fall on to. Point two, you have to write down a script on what you're going to say to your client, but treat this script as a guide. Don't use it as a form of manner where you're reading from a script and your client will be thinking you are like a computer automatic machine. Point three, you need to have product knowledge. With your product knowledge, you simply have confidence in communicating with your clients over the phone. It's very crucial that you know what you're selling and what are the important points that you need to give to your client. Point four, anticipating questions. Write down some questions that you think your client will ask you so that you might not be caught unaware when you are talking over the phone. And point five, simply practice, practice and practice. Do a dry run and ask your colleague, how do you sound over the phone? And this will actually help you further on. So now you're gonna pick up the phone and start dialing your client's number. The first point that you should take note of during your phone call will be to greet your clients by name. If not, you don't have their name, greet nicely over the phone, hi sir, hi ma'am. Second point, build a rapport, that is to break the ice and make sure you are trying to strike a conversation with your client, but not in the first place trying to sell over the phone. Point three, ask for information. Make sure you ask what you need, but not wait for your clients to supply the information you need. Point four, Clients will like to hear figures, some figures or some statistics that you prepared earlier so that they'll be enticed to talk to you further. Point five, if the phone call is not what you expect, always plant an opportunity at the end of a conversation. Give them your telephone number or name to tell them in future, if you need our services, you can call me at this number. Point six, remember to smile. Now, you have put down the phone call with your client. What should you do next? The point that I would like to mention to you is to do follow-up. Be it a follow-up of an SMS, an email, or a mailer, depending on the products or services you do, you may want to bring down a brochure down to your client's place, or pay a visit to them to explain further from them. With a follow-up, 
you'll be able to talk to your client further and understand your client better. Now, I'll share with you 10 tips that I hope can make you an even successful telemarketer. The first point, when to call your client. A call is important, but timing is even crucial. You would not like to talk to your client during lunch time when very busy, having his lunch or dinner, etc. Thus, timing is crucial. Point two, when you are doing some practices or dry and run on your own, probably get a partner along, sit back to back, do a role play, take on different scenarios. Maybe you are taking on a role as a telemarketer and your colleague taking a role as a client. So from there onwards, you all can learn from each other and point out each other's mistakes. Point three, when you're starting off a conversation, think of something interesting. An interesting opening statement will set you apart from the rest. And this is crucial if you want to make an impact on the first call to your client. Point four, environment is actually a very important factor when you're doing your calling. A best environment is to do phone calls with a group of telemarketers. Even though you may find that it's a bit noisy, but there's certain momentum that push you to make more phone calls. Point five, when you're asking a question, make sure you ask one at a time. Give time for your client to process. Point six, give a bit of time for your client to respond to your question. When you are asked at point seven, a question that you are not able to answer, delay an answer. Tell your client, can I call you back with an answer? Let me source up with my manager regarding this so that you can have a feedback call afterwards as well. And finally, point eight, don't be afraid to give a pause. Quietness in the phone call is all right. Time for the client to respond when they are thinking over the phone. So don't worry, pause is fine. And my top number two tip, which is also my point nine that I will be sharing with you, is the voice. Voice is a very important factor. Imagine my tone of voice when I'm speaking to you, uh, it's going to be like this manner and you wouldn't get to hear me longer and you might shut off this video, which I don't want it to happen. So tone is crucial. Speed, you don't want me to speak at a very slow pace, even though you are able to understand better. However, a natural speed is important so that your client can communicate well and understand you better. The volume, when I'm talking to you right now and everything seems to soften down, you wouldn't want it to happen. So moderate volume will be good enough when you're talking to a client. And my number one tip for you is to be persistent. When you're doing calling, if you feel rejected, don't be discouraged. Just carry on calling and definitely you'll get the results you want in the end. Thank you for watching and I wish you all the best.